Well, hello there. Have you been dreaming of an amazing vacation filled with lots of tasty eats, but you're dreading the weight gain that you believe will follow? Well, if this applies to you, stay tuned because in this video, I'm going to talk about three strategies that you can employ on vacation to prevent that dreaded weight gain. For those of you meeting me for the first time, I'm Dr. Amina Gooden, a physician and health coach, and I help you to figure out how to eat better so that you can feel better and stay out of the doctor's office. All right, we're gonna dive right into it. I'm on vacation as I film this, and every time I come on vacation, I always think about you know, people who worry about gaining weight on vacation and so on and so forth. And I always feel like I should do a video about weight gain on vacation. So here goes. I'm going to talk about three central strategies that you can employ so that you don't put on that weight during vacation. First strategy is number one, delay breakfast. Now note, I did not say skip breakfast because by definition, breakfast is the first meal of the day. It's the meal that you use to break a prolonged fast. So if you're having breakfast at midday, it's still breakfast because you are breaking the fast with that meal. Now, I find that on vacation, I tend to have lazy mornings and I just don't feel hungry in the morning. I don't feel the need to eat. And so while on vacation, my first meal can be as late as midday or possibly even later, depending on what's going on. Now, it's going to be different for different people, but generally speaking, because you don't have to worry about the hectic bustle of getting children ready for school or getting ready for work, you really can, you know, have that lazy morning where you wake up late and then you sort of mill around the house and so on, and you just don't need to necessarily rush to eat something to keep you going for a, on a busy work day. So delaying breakfast is one such strategy because what that does is that it extends your period of fasting. So you would go to sleep at night and overnight, of course, you'd be fasting. Say you get eight hours of sleep, you wake up at six o'clock in the morning or maybe seven. And so you would have, you would have had an eight hour fast, but if you can delay breakfast for another four hours or so, that would give you 12 hours of fasting. And if you add on two more hours on that, then potentially you can have 14 hours of fasting or more. You get the picture. What happens is that during fasting, your body is able to tap into its fat stores for the needed energy. And that way you can burn some of that excess fat that you have, that you have times of need rather than having to get energy externally from the food that you eat. If you're able to tap into fat stores that you might have accumulated the day before or on vacation, it means that you're not going to be packing on pounds because as you store something, as you store energy in the form of fat, you're utilizing that energy during the fasting period. And that's why delaying breakfast is such a good strategy, you know, adjunctive strategy to help prevent weight gain on vacation. Like I said, I didn't say skip breakfast, I just said to delay breakfast and what you're doing is compressing your eating window. So you're eating in a narrow uh, set of, uh, of time. And then also because you're compressing your eating window, you're not necessarily restricting yourself. You're not saying, you say, oh, I can't have this, I can't have that. You can have whatever you want, but because you're eating it in a narrower time period, you're giving your body a longer period of time to burn that excess energy that you would have consumed in that narrow window. So I like that strategy, delaying breakfast. The second strategy is to have a dessert at lunchtime as opposed to dinner time. If you're having dessert at lunchtime, it means that you have a longer period of time to burn the energy from the sugar in the dessert. Desserts, of course, are sweet. And a lot of desserts tend to be larger than they should be. I had dessert the other day. I had tiramisu. And the restaurant actually used to make a nice uh, small uh, tiramisu. But this last time, because we knew that previously it was a nice small tiramisu, my husband and I ordered one each because the tiramisu was so delicious. I didn't want to share. But lo and behold, they increased the size of the tiramisu. So I was kind of struggling to have that tiramisu. But if you're having something like that, that's on the larger side, if you're having it at noon or in earlier in the day, it means you definitely have a long period of time for the rest of the day, several hours, six, seven, you know, eight hours even, depending on how early you've had the dessert to burn that energy off. 
in the evening if you're having dessert you're having your dinner and you're having dessert this is just before bedtime so you're potentially going to go to bed maybe within two hours of eating that dinner and you're going to bed in fat storage mode because you have all this extra energy all this extra glucose of course is a form of energy and you're not moving around so you're not burning it so it's going to be stored and much of your fasting period is going to be you still trying to tackle and store this energy, this extra energy from dinner, rather than going into fat burning mode earlier during your sleeping period. So that's why having dessert at lunchtime as opposed to dinner time is also helpful to prevent weight gain gentrification. And then the third strategy is one that kind of might sound a little gimmicky or like a trend or whatever, but that's having apple cider vinegar before dinner. So that's something that I've actually heard of for many years. I remember a patient with diabetes coming to me once and telling me that he uh, started having apple cider vinegar before his meals and he found that his blood sugar levels improved, his diabetes uh, control improved and more and more lately um i've been hearing and apparently there's studies as well in fact i read one such study where it talked about how blood glucose levels can improve or can decrease uh by up to 20 percent so basically if you don't have apple cider vinegar blood glucose levels will go up to a certain degree but if you have apple cider vinegar when they do the study compared the two arms the two groups of people those who had apple cider vinegar two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar before the meal had a 20 percent reduction right their their, their blood uh, glucose levels went up 20 percent less than those who did not have apple cider vinegar and it is not 100% clear how exactly apple cider vinegar helps to keep blood glucose levels down after a meal. But one way is felt to be the fact that it inhibits the apple cider, the acetic acid, inhibits the enzyme that's responsible for breaking down the bonds uh, between the glucose molecules, the starch bonds. And because the starch is not being broken down as rapidly, it means that you're not having as rapid the absorption of glucose into the bloodstream. Now, of course, if you're not having rapid you know surges of glucose coming into the bloodstream it means that your liver and the digestive system in general has time to process that energy and you're not being uh bombarded all at once with large amounts of energy um that the body cannot handle and has no choice but to quickly try and store it away so that's how having something like apple cider vinegar will help to um potentially help to uh reduce blood glucose levels and therefore decrease your chance of you know decrease the amount of fat that you're storing because you're requiring less insulin because your blood glucose levels are going up less after the meal now the dose of apple cider vinegar um, in the studies and generally what people would use would be two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar before meals. Now, apple cider vinegar is acetic, ac acidic, sorry. <laughs> and um, so you have to be careful because it can sort of uh, damage the teeth potentially. And so you can dilute the apple cider vinegar in a glass of water and then you can drink it with a straw to protect your teeth. So that's one tip there with the acetic acid or apple cider vinegar. So those are the three tips that I uh, suggest you can employ to help Help you maintain your weight during vacation and generally enjoy a vacation trying out different foods from different restaurants one of my favorite things about vacation and traveling is to try different restaurants different dishes and certainly desserts okay so one delay uh, breakfast meaning that you will have breakfast later on in the day and you will have a longer period where you're in fat uh, burning mode Two, have dessert at lunchtime rather than dinner time, so you're not going to bed in fat storage mode. And then three, having two tablespoons of vinegar before dinner, potentially a large meal, so that you do not have that much of a surge of blood glucose and therefore you're not going um, into this fat burn, sorry, fat storage mode because of that heavy dinner just before bedtime. I hope you all found these tips helpful. If you did, be sure to subscribe to my channel so that you can be notified of other videos that hopefully will be helpful to you as you strive to get healthy, take control of your health, and so that you can rely less on um, external factors, healthcare system, prescription medications, etc. Thank you for watching. Bye.